How much money do you think Apple charges for this watch strap? Any guesses? Would you be surprised if I said it's $150? Well, if I said that, I'd be lying since it's a staggering $200. Yes, that's $200 for a watch strap. You can get a second generation Apple Watch SE for less than that, including a watch strap. This particular watch strap is called the Titanium Milanese Loop and is one of the strap options you have with the new Black Apple Watch Ultra. I have to admit this Black Apple Watch Ultra 2 with the black watch strap is probably the best looking Apple Watch I own, but is this strap actually any good? More specifically, if I want to use it during sports, will it be able to hold my Apple Watch Ultra 2 stably on my wrist? Because that's usually the big issue with metal watch bands from other brands. They're heavy and they don't have a lot of grip. On the other hand, the sensor in all recent Apple Watches has proven to be the best heart rate sensor out there under many conditions, so maybe it won't matter. Today we'll find out if this $200 watch strap holds up during sports. Now, I just had a first quick peek at the data and the results are actually quite surprising. In total, I used the black Apple Watch Ultra 2 with the titanium millilitres loop during four bike rides, a spinning session, an outdoor run, an indoor run and a gym session. Let's see if it was able to track my heart rate accurately. As always, let's start with one of the easiest exercises for a watch to track indoor cycling. And you can see an overview of the results for indoor cycling right here. As you're used to, we will use an ECG chest strap as a reference, which is generally one of the most reliable ways to measure heart rate. In this case, I'm using the Polar H10, which is along the horizontal axis right here. And on the vertical axis is the black Apple Watch Ultra 2 with the titanium Milanese loop. And if the measurements would agree perfectly, all points should be on or at least super close to this blue line, right? Right here and as you can see overall this looks really good almost all points are on or at least super close to the blue line but there are a few points away from the blue line now in the lower heart rate range there's a few but this is a small deviation but there's four points right here that are quite a bit further away from the blue line and i'm not sure what's going on here this is not something we typically see with apple watches now the correlation is still very good at 0.98 so it's this r value up here now this cannot be higher than one so a correlation of 0.98 is super close to that but still a bit lower than we saw for the apple watch series 10 but let's take a look at the session itself to see if we can explain why there are four points so far away from the blue line and here you can see the spinning session itself where we exactly see what the issue is along the horizontal axis we have the clock time and my heart rate is along the vertical axis with in blue green my heart rate according to the polar h10 ecg chest strap and in red my heart rate according to the ultra 2 and as you can see, for most of the ride, the agreement is very good. The Apple Watch Ultra 2 basically detected the same heart rate as the reference device. But weirdly, in these three moments right here, it all of a sudden detected a too low heart rate for a little bit, but just for a little bit. So these are those four points that we saw before. So for two out of three of these moments, it just detected one heartbeat wrong, and for one of them, two heartbeats. So generally not a big problem, but it is a bit weird because I've never seen something like this for an Apple Watch before. And if we now look at the exact same ride, but now for the Apple Watch Series 10, the 46 millimeter version in this case, we actually see a perfect agreement. So it doesn't have these weird points dropping down so overall more or less the same performance for both though the apple watch series 10 doesn't have this weird artifact and you can see that in this overview right here along the horizontal axis is that correlation value we're looking at before so the r value and we want that value to be as close to one as possible and on the vertical axis i ordered the watches from worst to best so the further to the right and the higher devices the better is its correlation with the reference device and you can see the black Apple Watch Ultra 2 marked in red right here. And as you can see, it's among some of the better performing watches, but it is a bit difficult to read. So let's zoom in a bit so we can read those labels better. And you can see that zoomed in view right here. So these are just the watches with a correlation of 0.9 or higher. And as you can see, even within this range of better performing watches, the Apple Watch 2 is amongst the better ones out there. It's not amongst the absolute top. So especially the lighter Apple Watches are doing really well. So we have the Apple Watch Series 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10 right here. All also the Pixel Watch 2 did a bit better and that's also not quite as good as my previous testing of the Apple Watch Ultra, so the generation 2 and 1 right here. And that's because of these four deviant points, this really already significantly degrade the correlation. So overall about the performance I would expect except for those four deviant points. Still overall this is a very good performance I would say. So for cycling indoors it's still looking pretty good, but there are already some first indications there might be some slight issues with the worst fit and added weight of this expensive metal band with the Apple Watch Ultra 2. But let's next make the exercises a bit more difficult and let's take a look at the results for indoor running, which increases the bumpiness during exercise quite a bit. And here we have a similar overview to before, but now for indoor running. 
And as you can see though, the correlation is still quite good at 0.97. There's a systematic deviation here below the blue line, so I'm not sure what's going on here. Even though it's not that far, it does indicate that for a large part of the run, the Apple Watch Ultra 2 detected a too low heart rate. And this is really not something we're used to from Apple. So let's take a look at the individual run itself to see if we can explain what's happening right here. And here we have the results for the indoor run itself, where we for the first time with Apple Watches in a long time see a big issue. So for this first segment right here, the Apple Watch Ultra 2 in red detected a way too low heart rate. And then for the second segment, it was able to keep up somewhat for the first part. And then for a while, it just stopped detecting my heart rate altogether, which is why there's this straight line right here. This means that in between right here and right here, it just didn't detect the heart rate at all. Now the last part of this run looks a bit better. It didn't fully detect this peak right here, but the last two peaks were correctly detected. But overall, this isn't what we're used to from Apple. And we can actually see that much better by looking at this same run, but now as measured by the Apple Watch Series 10. And as you can see, the Apple Watch Series 10 in red right here didn't have any issues at all detecting my heart rate, or maybe some minor issues right here and right here. But overall, it was never more than a few BPM off. So this looks much better. So the added weight and poor grip of the metal strap does appear to have some effect. Okay, here we're definitely seeing some major issues already, and I'm afraid things might get even worse as the exercises get harder. Let's next take a look at running outside, which is generally even a bit harder, especially since there's more outside sunlight that can leak into the sensor and confuse it. By the way, if you find this analysis to be helpful, it really helped me to get access to new devices sooner and reach more people if you like this video and subscribe to the channel. Tapping those two buttons would be amazingly helpful, but back to the testing. And also for outside running in this overview right here i definitely see some potential issues now most points are indeed on or close to the blue line but in the higher heart rate range some are above it a bit and some are below it a bit so there's again some variation and there's also some points below the blue line right here so this isn't looking that great the correlation still isn't bad at 0.95 but i suspect something is going on here so let's take a look at the individual run itself and looking at the run itself we can see that the apple watch ultra 2 in black sometimes detected a 2 high heart rate as it did in the beginning right here and sometimes a too low heart rate right here. I would say that about half the run the Apple Watch Ultra 2 was able to detect my heart rate at least relatively accurately so right here but also right here but there's enough deviation to have me worried. So in the beginning right here, it really struggled. It could be that my skin was still warming up and after it was a bit warm, I'd had an easier time of detecting my heart rate, but I'm still not that happy with this result. And we can again see that the Apple Watch Series 10 did significantly better than the Apple Watch Ultra 2, though it also had some issues here in the beginning. So it could indeed be that my skin was still warming up and after the blood flow was a bit better and more consistent, it had an easier time of detecting my heart rate, but still this looks better than what we saw for the Ultra 2. And and again, let's put these results into context with the black Apple Watch Ultra 2 marked in red right here. And as you can see, based on just that correlation value, it's very similar in performance to my previous testing of the Generation 1 and Generation 2 of the Apple Watch Ultra. But that doesn't take into account any missing value, so the correlation value isn't perfect. And we can also see that most of the time, the lighter versions of the Apple Watches did better in my testing. So we have the 46 millimeter version of the Apple Watch Series 10, but also the Apple Watch Series 9 and the Apple Watch Series 8. So all of these did quite a bit better now there is this weird thing going on here with the 42 millimeter version of the apple watch series 10 but more about that in my full review oh and again i forgot to add the pixel watch series 3 right here which was also a great watch for running but also for instance the Coral space 3 and garmin 4 and 165 are doing a good job so for running outside, the black Apple Watch Ultra 2 with the titanium millinese loop definitely starts showing some more issues. It's not disastrous yet, but it's definitely not great. But let's now make things even more difficult and let's take a look at cycling outside. Here there is so much bumpiness that I expect some major issues might arise because of the combined weight of the Apple Watch Ultra 2 with this metal band. And as you can see in this overview right here, the correlation is still pretty okay at 0.94, so much better than many devices out there, but worse than what I'm used to for a typical Apple Watch. Yes, most points are on or close to the blue line right here, but there are still quite a few points a bit below the blue line. So again, I suspect something weird is going on, but now it's super important to look at the cycling sessions themselves to see if we can explain what's going on and to see if these results are good enough for you to use this Apple Watch for cycling outside. Now for this first bike ride right here, we can see that when the Apple Watch Ultra 2 in red detected my heart rate, it was relatively accurate, but it didn't fully detect some of the 
peaks, especially right here and right here. And it also lost signal right here again. So each time you see a straight line like this right here in the plot, it means the Apple Watch Ultra 2 lost the signal and wasn't detecting a heart rate. And this is quite a bit worse than the result we have right here for the Apple Watch Series 10. Yes, it also had some minor issues right here and right here, I would say, but overall it was quite good at detecting my heart rate and the Apple Watch Ultra wasn't quite as good as this. And for this second relatively short bike ride, the Apple Watch Ultra 2 just did a terrible job, I would say. I can't remember ever getting quite such a bad result for an Apple Watch, especially the peaks in my heart rate just weren't detected. And if we look at the Apple Watch Series 10 for the same ride, we can see it did quite a bit better, though interestingly it also lost signal for a while. So it didn't fully detect this peak or this peak, but especially this loss of signal right here is quite obvious. So I'm not sure why it's not doing quite as well as my initial testing, but overall it's still a very good heart rate tracker for cycling outside. And also for the third bike ride right here, we can see that the Ultra 2 didn't do a terrible job, but again some loss of signal right here. And the Apple Watch Series 10 just does a lot better for the exact same ride. And for this fourth and final ride I wanted to show you, we see that most of the ride, the Apple Watch Ultra 2 just wasn't able to detect my heart rate. There are large sections of the ride where it had a loss of signal, so right here, but also right here and right here. So it really again goes to show that the type of strap you use is very important. And again, looking at the exact same ride, but now it's measured by the Apple Watch Series 10, this looks a lot better. So really a big difference between these two watches with the exact same sensor. And again, let's put these results into context with the black version of the Apple Watch Ultra 2 marked in red right here. And you can see this is among some of the better performing watches, at least based on just the correlation. But I do need to emphasize again that the correlation value is not perfect once we have a lot of missing values which will not be reflected in this kind of overview but let's zoom in a bit so we can read those labels better and we have that zoomed in view right here with just the watches of a correlation of 0.8 or higher and as you can see the black version of the apple watch ultra 2 is very close to my previous testing of the generation 1 and generation 2 of the apple watch ultra so in correlation it's very similar but there are many missing values now which are not taken into account so keep it in the back of your mind i still think if you use a different strategy the Apple Watch Ultra can be a great heart rate tracker even for cycling but you do need to use the correct type of strap. Even if you have a better strap the added weight still plays a part so we see the lighter watches so the Apple Watch Series 7, Series 8, 9 and 10 are all doing quite a bit better than all my testing of the Apple Watch Ultra. Okay I would say that for cycling outside I just wouldn't use the Apple Watch Ultra 2 with this expensive metal strap. If it gets a signal, the Ultra 2 seems pretty okay most of the time, but it just loses signal so often because of the poor signal quality that much of my rides just aren't tracked. This basically just makes it useless for much of the ride, and this really goes to show how important the quality of the strap is. But to close things off, let's look at another difficult exercise, weightlifting. Can the Apple Watch Ultra 2 redeem itself here? And here we have an overview for weightlifting, which actually looks very similar to my recent review of the Apple Watch Series 10. The correlation is 0.94 so definitely not bad and most points are on or close to the blue line there are a few above it right here but what we typically see for most watches is that in the higher heart rate range they detect a too low heart rate and this is not what's going on for the apple watch so what typically happens is during a set of exercises your heart rate increases but also the tension on your arm is very big because you're holding the weight and this makes it very hard for a smartwatch to detect your heart rate and this is not what's happening for the apple watch that is to say it doesn't detect a too low heart rate right here it might still be that it detects the poor signal quality and just stops detecting your heart rate altogether during your set so let's take a look at the individual weightlifting session now looking at the weightlifting session itself we can see that in the beginning when i did legs the heart rate performance is okay most of the peaks were detected but interestingly some of the dips weren't detected but later on the moment i started to do upper body the apple watch ultra 2 just wasn't able to detect my heart rate accurately there are many moments where it has a loss of signal so most of the peaks were weren't detected wrongly so it didn't detect the wrong heart rate in the peaks but it just stopped detecting a heart rate and looking at the same weightlifting session with the series 10 does look a bit better so it is able to detect the dips in my heart rate right here and it also detected some of the peaks in my heart rate when I did upper body, but generally it still just stops detecting my heart rate the moment there's a lot of tension on my arm. So both the Series 10 and Apple Watch Ultra I wouldn't really recommend for weightlifting because the Apple Watch just stops detecting your heart rate when there's too much tension on your arm. And just for completeness, let's again put these results into context with again the black version of the Ultra 2 marked in red right here. And as you can see, just based on correlation is doing quite decent, which we can see even better if we zoom in a bit. So here we have the zoomed in view, so just the watches with a 
a correlation of 0.8 or higher. And as you can see in this case, the Ultra 2 in black is doing worse than most other Apple Watches, even my previous testing of the Generation 1 and 2 of the Apple Watch Ultra. So all these Apple Watches with the more appropriate strap are doing better than the Apple Watch Ultra with the metal strap. But still, if you want accurate heart rate tracking during weightlifting, and this is very important to you, just use an ECG chest strap. That's the best way to make sure you get the most reliable heart rate tracking possible. All of these results combined make the price tag of this metal band seem way too high in my opinion. And I'm really quite surprised because my subjective feeling was that this metal band was much better than many other bands I've tried in that it kept the watch much better on my wrist. However, it still appears that this just wasn't enough and the combined weight of the Ultra 2 with the metal strap Plus the fact that metal just tends to slide more on my wrist makes the signal quality too poor for reliable heart rate tracking. Now the good news is that the Apple Watch doesn't notice when the signal quality is poor and it throws out those low quality measurements. But regardless, this means that large parts of my training just aren't tracked. If we compare these results to those of the much cheaper Apple Watch Series 10, this makes this particular Apple Watch Ultra 2 seem like a bad deal. You get poorer tracking and roughly the same size of screen and it even lacks the one hertz always on display. Play. Now of course the Ultra has better battery life and the looks are arguably a bit better but still the 46mm version of the Apple Watch Series 10 is less than half the price. So if it were me I'd definitely not get this metal band with my Ultra. Or if I did I'd get a second strap for use with sports activities but the costs then really start to add up. The good thing is that if you get the Ultra 2 with another strap it's likely $100 cheaper which saves you 10% on the price and increases the performance of the Apple Watch Ultra 2 heart rate tracking quite a bit. All in all I'm a bit disappointed though. I honestly expected that this strap would not degrade the performance as much as it turns out it does. So be forewarned if you do decide to get this particular strap. Now if you do decide to get an Apple Watch, a Whoop strap, an Aura Ring, an HD Pod 4, another device or anything at all on Amazon for that matter, even something as small as toilet paper, want to potentially save some money and at the same time support the channel, the different affiliate links in the description below do not cost you any extra and some even provide a significant discount. Now, now given that you watched this whole video on the Apple Watch Ultra 2, check out this initial review of the Apple Watch Series 10 or this video on my top recommendations for health and sports tracking. Thank you so much for watching and catch you in the next video.